say, hey, do you want to do the counseling? Yes, absolutely. Great resource, the meditation every day really sets your mindset. Again, what I said on day one, doing the goal setting and the one task or up to three tasks for the next day. And then staying hyper-focused to that one to three tasks. And once you completed that, you can go to the next one. But that is important and essential for the ADHD brain to, to be directed and have a plan and stay on the plan no matter what. Because once you break the plan, it's so easy for the ADHD brain to get distracted and then not follow it. So again, with the families going into family, supporting each other. So the ADHD brain too, in the beginning, will need to be supervised in taking the brain supplement program. The timing, the reminders, and if you don't have someone, um, the phone is a great resource, having it all laid out, do it for the whole week, whatever it takes. And then if you choose to work with me, there can be reminders, there can be strategies, as well I, as a retraining of the mindset and the brain from the perspective of the brain health assessment specifically for your brain and then strategies that have worked for me and also too with all the um, coaching and counseling skills that I've had. Um, um, I'm certified in and have a master's certification in the coaching and the counseling part. So again, having the resources and the tools to support you to do that. So this person on medication, meditating, counseling, working out, and still the deficiencies are major. So that's why this person is, is still reaching out because all of these amazing things that should work, again, work for the 80% of the population are not working for ADHD. So again, the ADHD person, as we went over day one, has that deficiency in their brain of major nutrients. Um, the brain size is also different. And then the reduction of GABA in the brain. So how do we, we do that to scale up, to actually have our best life and the ease that we deserve? So today's focus is how to get from performance anxiety to high performance. Um, and again, the ADHD brain, once switched on, can do absolutely anything. The best of the best in the world. And you know that. And so there's that internal frustration if you are not performing as well as, as, as you know you can. There's that dialogue. It's like, why am I not? I know I'm that. Why am I passed over? Why, why did I not get that opportunity? And why don't people see that? Or why do people think I'm flaky? And why do I have conflict in my conversation? And, um, you know, people are saying that, you know, your medical doctor or other people or your spouse, it's all in your head. Are you going crazy? And again, we look at it. It is in your head, but from the biochemical perspective. So once you get the resources in, you switch on, everything switches on. And the amount of stuff you can get done in less time with ease. And then the organizational skills come in and it's just easy. And you can get your taxes done on time. You can fill out that form for university or even a simple questionnaire or survey can get done because you mean to. And here's the interesting thing with your brain, that if you commit to something, which ADHD people do quite a bit, and you don't uncommit it in your brain, it's always thinking about that event. So it's like, oh, I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the bathroom. And then like, oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow and to do it tomorrow. And then it's, it's also taking energy away from what you're doing right now, if you never do that, or if you say to yourself, I am not going to, to paint the bathroom. I've decided that I'm not going to do it, it's gonna keep that way. So the brain actually calms down and then can focus on really your list. So it's like the background going all the time, like with having all your apps open on your phone, that's the ADHD brain. So we've got to close some of those apps out and just get one going. And then the battery life of your phone lasts forever. And you can do use all the functionality. Too many apps open, um, the phone starts to not work. So a great analogy for what's happening with the ADHD brain. So this is another thing. So have a rolling start. So waiting for the light to change. So if you're sitting at the light and you're waiting for the light to change, it actually takes when the lights to change, and this is depending on whether um, you're texting, which you should not be, um, if you're present, and or if you're deep in thought, because it could take out anywhere from two to five seconds when the light changes to green for you to get going. 
But let's say, you know, the light is red, there's an empty lane, and you just start driving up and you're slowing down, but you're still rolling and the light changes and then you just go. And see the ease in that? It's easier to have a rolling start and it also goes to physics. Um, it's easier once in motion to stay in motion. The hardest part is the starting. And once you're stopped, getting that inertia to take that first step, to take that first step to go for a walk, to take that first step to take the supplement, the first step to do the brain health assessment, the first step to do self-care, all of those things um, take more energy if you've stopped and you're not doing it. So once you take that first step, like like Craig did, he did um, all the artwork, did the forms. Now he's taking action, he's moving forward, so things will be coming easier. So his next step is to do the supplement program and the coaching piece to stay on, on track and accountable because just having that um, VIP accountability has already led him to take action and he's now changing his brain. Um, but because of the major deficiencies, I can see how difficult it is for him to do that. Extremely difficult. And if those numbers came in, because the numbers come in all the time, um, and when I see those ones, I actually reach out to them and I say, you have to work with me. It's not optional. And especially it's for children because um, children with those numbers, when they should have zero deficiencies, are at risk of suicide. And um, that is my major passion to prevent that from happening. And uh, if we can get in front of it and change that. And the other interesting thing is that with the numbers, if a child at eight to 10 have deficiencies in dopamine, um, that could make them at risk of having Parkinson's. So again, if we can get ahead of that, then that may never happen, which is super awesome because dopamine um, really affects our balance. And people always think about it as depression. And so this is a really interesting thing with ADHD people who go on antidepressants. Their deficiency really isn't in the dopamine, it's in the GABA. So they're treating the wrong neurotransmitter, which is also why it doesn't work well. And when we look at these numbers, it's specifically going, okay, this is why you're feeling why you're feeling. And there's a physiology part of the neurotransmitters too, because you can train for your neurotype, you can work out for your neurotype. So there's a lot of positive things, but I focus on really helping support you um, get your brain back so that you can um, really live the life that uh, you deserve. So waking up the brain, you can meditate, you can recite positive thoughts and even pray. Active faith, active love, active work takes movement. So let's start by waking up the brain. So the first thing I want you guys to do, and whether you can, if you're at your office, and you can do this at your office, just reach up above, chin up, and always look up. Because we're looking down so much. And some people, um, they look down so often, it's really hard for them to um, look up. So might not get your arms up so high. So here, here, out to the side, the movement just again, and even standing up. And one of my favorite ones is doing the cross crawls. That wakes up your brain. Actually, this will help with balance when you're 100. And it does prevent um, brain fog and dementia. So people go, how does movement do that? And that's why, again, the rolling start physics, once in motion, it stays in motion. And really, movements are so critical that if we don't go from crawling to like from not walking, not crawling, to crawling, to walking, um, we actually do not integrate some of the, re the primal reflexes, which affects learning. So going back to looking at how physical movement is so important, along with the resources. So doing it all together is really profound. Yes, it's so achy in your neck when you look up, definitely not a position I'm used to. And that is what is happening with kids. So um, the fascia, so people are like, oh, does fascia stretch? Well, actually what's happening is fascial fibers are laying down. So it goes from being the normal healthy to being super thick. And so that becomes like concrete 
So then eventually people can't do that, but that concrete is affecting your nervous system, your lymph, your muscle, as well as every organ in your body. And again, that's why movement is really important. Taking action um, is really essential. Just seeing if there's any other questions here. Awesome. Okay. So we wake up the brain. Hopefully you guys did that or even one arm up over, but just notice how the energy comes up. And when we have that energy, we're more likely to um, take action. So for like this all day, that makes you more fatigued. And just by sitting up, okay, so your parents hopefully said, um, you know, sit up straight and eat your food. And the reason they may not know, um, but unconsciously they know, if you're sitting up, it actually helps your digestion. If you're doing this and you have no space here, it's so easy to choke. But again, the process is releasing all the digestive enzymes becomes compromised. So that's how important body position is, movement is for taking action and just taking that action. Again, if you're at work, walk around, arms up over your head, like every 10, 15 minutes, we really need to take that, that uncomfortable action. Because once people actually go to a workshop, they're like, hmm, I don't want to get up. I don't want to interact because they just want to stay still. But part of really integrating the learning. If you write, that's why filling out those forms, if you write, and if you're writing while I'm talking or even doodling, um, your retention of the information goes up to like 85%. If you just sit there and you're sitting back in your chair like this or looking down, um, your retention of what was going on in the last three days goes down to about 30%. So that's how important and statistically and science is, is proving that, that um, that's how powerful that is.